Hello. Today, we're going to talk about integer operations. The objective is to learn about the rules for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers. In order to do that, we first need to know what integers are. You may have remembered back in kindergarten when you first started learning about numbers, you were counting numbers, you know, one, two, three, four. Those are the natural numbers. They're every number you can count up, up to one gazillion bazillion. Uh, they're just the natural numbers. Whole numbers are all the natural numbers, those counting numbers, plus the number zero, which is a whole, right? Whole numbers. They're all the natural numbers, including the number zero. Integers. Integers are all the natural numbers and their opposites. Now, an opposite is a number that's the same distance from zero on the number line, but in the opposite direction. So the opposite of 5 would be negative 5. The opposite of negative 2,000 would be positive 2,000. It also includes the 0. So all natural numbers are whole numbers. All whole numbers are integers. Rational numbers are any number that can be expressed as a fraction. And it actually includes all the above, as well as decimals, fractions, it doesn't include irrational numbers, which we will get to at another time. But ratio is another word for fraction. Ratio, rational. Notice how it starts with the same letters. Helpful tip there. Moving on. Adding integers. When adding integers, the rule is if you have the same signs for the numbers you're adding, then you add the numbers and use a sign for your answer. Here I have two positive numbers. Pretty straightforward. 4 plus 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. My answer is going to be positive. Both numbers were positive. The answer is positive. Here, here's where it gets a little tricky. We have a negative and a negative. We are adding two negative numbers. So we're going to ignore the signs for a moment and just add the two numbers. 3 plus 5 is 8. But since we're adding two negatives, the answer should be negative as well. So the answer here is 12. The answer here is negative 8. If you have opposite signs when you're adding, the rule is to subtract the smaller number from the larger number, and the answer gets the sign of the larger number. Now when I talk about smaller and larger here, I'm talking about temporarily ignoring the signs. So when looking at negative 6 plus 2, we have two opposite sign numbers. One's negative, one's positive. All right, we're going to ignore the signs for a second and ask ourselves which one's larger. 6 is larger than 2, so we're going to do 6 minus 2. And that's going to give us 4. To get the sign of our answer, we need to look at the sign of a larger number, which was negative 6, so our answer is going to be negative 4. Now over here, I just want to correct that number, here we have a positive 3 and a negative 5 being added. Notice the parentheses here, we cannot have plus minus together, that's a totally different operation sign. The parentheses help separate the fact that this is the operation and this is the sign of that number. Since we're adding opposites, we need to find out which one's larger. 5 is larger than 3, so we do 5 minus 3, and that gives us an answer of 2. The sign of the answer is going to be the sign of the larger number, which was negative, so we get negative 2 for the answer. Subtraction rules. When subtracting integers, we actually are adding the opposite number. The first number stays the same. The operation changes from subtract to add, and then change the sign of the second number. You may have heard of keep it, change it, change it. And then you're going to follow the adding rules. What does that mean? Well, here we have negative 4 minus 1. We're going to change this to an addition problem so we can add the opposite. So here we have negative 4. The first number stays the same. The operation becomes plus. 
instead of a positive one, you're going to have a negative one. Keep it, change it, change it. Adding two negatives, according to the rules, adding the same signs, we keep the sign, and we're just going to add the numbers. 4 plus 1 gives me 5. So I have a negative 5 for my answer there. Over here, keep it, change it, change it. Keep the 6 as a 6. Change subtraction to addition. Change the negative to a positive 2. So what we have here is 6 plus 2. And 6 plus 2 is 8. Same signs, same sign for the answer. The answer is positive 8. Multiplying integers. When multiplying integers, if the two numbers you are multiplying have the same sign, the product is positive. So here we have two numbers being multiplied. Yes, this dot right there, which I'll make a little bit larger, this dot is replacing what used to be the x for multiplying. We're now going to use this dot in the middle for multiplying. So negative 2 times negative 8. Again, the parentheses here are to help separate it. Negative 2 times negative 8, same sign. We're going to multiply the two numbers. 2 times 8 is 16. And negative times negative, same sign. The answer is going to be positive. So we have a positive 16 for our answer. Do I have to write the plus sign there? No. Doesn't matter. It's still a positive number whether I've got the plus sign there or not. Over here, two positives being multiplied. 3 times 4 is 12. There's my answer there. If I have opposite signs, the product is the negative, is going to be negative. So 3 times 5. Notice how there's no operation here? Whenever there's no operation between a number and a set of parentheses, it's understood that you are multiplying. So I am multiplying 3 and negative 5, which is positive 3 and a negative 5, there's opposite signs, which means that we're going to have a negative answer. And 3 times 5 is 15. Again, multiplying these two, opposite signs. This one's negative. That's one's, that one's positive. We know the answer is going to be negative. And 6 times 8 is 48. When we're boxing our circle, we want to make sure that we include our sign inside that box or circle. Moving on. Dividing integers. When you divide integers, the same signs, with dividing integers with the same signs, the quotient, or the answer in a division problem, is positive. Opposite signs, the quotient is negative. Sound familiar? Should. Same rules for multiplying. Only difference here is instead of saying product, we're saying quotient. Now, here you're looking at this, and some of you may be saying, that's a fraction. There's no division there. The fraction bar is a division symbol. So we want to make sure that we know that this is negative 9 divided by negative 3. Same signs. My answer is going to be positive. 9 divided by 3 is 3. My answer is positive 3. Here, I've got opposite signs being divided. Negative 4 divided by 2 is going to be 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we know my answer is going to be negative because I have opposite signs to begin with. There is one more thing I'd like to talk about when it comes to multiplying integers. If you're multiplying multiple integers, what you do is you add up the number of signs. If the number of so negative signs, sorry, add up the number of negative signs. If the number of negative signs is even, the answer will be positive. If the number of negative signs is odd, the answer will be negative. That's only when multiplying multiple numbers together. Thank you, and I'll see you in class.